Hi everyone, this is Penny from Wacko Witch Astrology and today we have a big question. This is a serious question to be asking and that's, is this person your soulmate? Now, first of all, I just, I want to admit that I was skeptical about doing this for a pick a card reading. I feel like if you really want to know about someone and it's an important question in your life, you should get a personal reading from a professional that you trust. I am totally skeptical about the fact that I'm doing this pick a card reading and I'm setting it out into the internet and anyone can watch it. They can pick any card they want. They can add their own interpretations to it kind of however they want. And I'm, I'm a little bit worried about it, honestly. Like that's what took me so long to actually do this. But I know that it's something that people want. It's something that a lot of people are asking. And again, if, if you need more clarification or more guidance, find a professional reader, find someone who supports you and honestly has love for you. Like I feel like a good reader is honestly a loving person who wants the best for you. So find that person and ask them this question and ask them what kind of role this person actually has in your life. Now these cards are going to give you a decent chunk of information on that. This is going to be like tip of the iceberg only telling you a, a little bit as opposed to everything you could find out from getting a personal in-depth reading. But this is what we have here today and I just wanted to give you that little bit of a sort of kind of disclaimer before we get into this. Now we have six cards here. Uh, this is number one, number two, number three, four, five, and number six. So I want you to focus on these and find the one that is calling to you most strongly. Find the one that you are really drawn towards and make sure you are focusing on the person that you want to ask about. If you want to ask about multiple people, try focusing on their energy one at a time and then seeing which card calls to you as you focus on your relationship with that person. If you prefer to have a still image of this rather than picking on video, I will have a link to my Instagram post in the description below. So I'll give you just another minute. Okay, with that being said, we're going to move on to the cards. Now, again, I want to emphasize that for most people, the answer is going to be no that this person is most likely not your soulmate. Most of the people we meet in life are not our soulmates and that's just the way it is. Um, but with the way Tarot works, it's also gonna tell you like a little bit about what might be going on in the relationship and why you might be wondering if this person is your soulmate and perhaps what purpose they actually serve in your life. So let's go ahead and see what we got in the cards, uh, starting with card number one here. So the card that we got is Let's, let me see if I can get the glare off, is the Four of Cups. So this card is about honestly feeling pretty dissatisfied. And what's probably going on here is that you haven't been totally honest with yourself. You have been trying to make yourself feel that there's something there, that there's real true fulfillment there because you have such a strong and repressed desire to be happy. You've been waiting so long for the right thing. You've dreamt of it, you've wanted it. And this person honestly just isn't it. You might have felt that universal love being activated within your life because it's something you want so bad, but you aren't really soulmates with this person that you are asking about here today. This is someone who doesn't truly make you happy and honestly, like be real with yourself. It's someone who's not gonna make you happy in the long term. You might be trying to settle for them. You might be just wishing that you had finally gotten to the point where you had made your soulmate and they had been brought to you here by the heavens. Thank goodness, hallelujah. But you you got a little bit impatient somewhere along the line and this person honestly is not it. And it might be really hard to let go of that and just accept the idea that they're not your soulmate and let go of it and move on. But that's what the spirits had for you today. So I'm just going to set that aside. 
Next we have card number two. And this one is the Four of Swords. So what I'm getting from this is that you two came together in a really difficult time. You honestly needed some, some nurturing and some time to repair and recuperate from things you had physically, emotionally, and psychologically experienced in the past. So this relationship kind of became a safe space for you to go, for you to rest your mind, for you to recover your body. It became a safe harbor for you to be able to protect yourself and get ready for the things that you are meant to be doing in life, for the things that you are meant to accomplish. And I'm feeling like you have a lot of goals that have been put on the back burner that you've had to wait to be able to accomplish. There's been obstacles, there's been things getting in your way. Maybe they were physical injuries, um, maybe it was in, an issue with student loans or something like that and you weren't able to finish your education. That's what it's going to be for some people, but obviously that's not what it is for everyone since this is a pick a card reading. Um, but there's, there's been a lot of obstacles in your life. There's been a lot of things that have kind of held you back. And uh, this relationship with this person was a recovery process and something that was meant to keep you safe for a while so that you can go out and accomplish what you're meant to accomplish once you are done recovering. So you might be tempted to kind of hold on to this person like a crutch. And I mean, honestly, that's what makes sense. That's what makes sense logically to want to have this person by your side and there with you all throughout life. Uh, you don't want to feel like you use them. You don't want to feel like they serve their purpose and then it's just time to move on. Um, you know, for some people, you were like actually literally sick and this person sat by your bedside and helped you recover. So, I mean, it, it feels pretty crappy to be like, oh, they're not my soulmate. I have to leave now. Um, but it's kind of what this card is telling you. It's telling you that your your heart is honestly somewhere else and you're gonna have to find a way to sort through this. And that's not to say that this person can't be in your life at all because this person has probably had a great role in your life. They've been really important to you. Uh, so hopefully they can be in your life in some other way, but the spirits are saying that they are not your romantic soulmate. All right, card number three. Let's see what it is. Okay, so this one is the Three of Coins. This is uh, one of the small handfuls of cards in the deck that actually can symbolize marriage and formal union, depending on the context that it's displayed in within a full reading. Now, having it as the only card in a pick a card reading, um, I feel like it's a little bit more complicated because this is saying, for all intents and purposes, it it appears that this person is your soulmate. Like things are already put together, things are already organized. There isn't very much question left about it. So most likely this is people uh, who are watching this who pretty much already know what's going on in their love life and they're probably watching it kind of just for entertainment. And uh, <laughs> all I'm getting is warnings about like how doing that can be dangerous and you could end up getting the wrong idea about something and it can lead you astray and it can all create all kinds of confusion and chaos in your relationship. So the message that I'm getting from this card is don't mess with a good thing. Um, and in some respects, it might feel like your life is already figured out. Your life is already boring. Like you need to go watch some soap operas to entertain yourself or something. And believe me, like I can relate to that. Like, look, I'm married. So, <laughs> um, like I know, because I do this kind of thing too. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what's happening here. I, I get the sense that you guys are already in a relationship. You guys already have some plans made. Things are pretty organized. There's not like a whole lot of room for question and uh, wondering what's going on at this point. And I, I feel like you even trust that already. Like you're even already secure in it. Uh, hopefully secure enough that even if I were to sit here and tell you right now that this person isn't your soulmate, you know, hopefully you'd still be committed to what you have already found for yourself in life. Um, but, but that's all I'm really going to say here. Let me, let me know in the comments below, um, how exactly that hit you or if that was just me projecting. Um, I can't really do my own pick of cards because 
obviously I would get like emotionally invested in it, but I feel like this is the one that I would have wound up picking if I had tried to do my own pick a card. So hopefully I didn't project too much on that one there. That was embarrassing. Let's, <laughs> let's go on. Okay, so now we have pick a card number four. What is it? It is the Nine of Cups. So this one's all about nurturing and satisfaction and appreciating what you have found. Um, so this is a person in your life who has... I'm getting totally mixed messages here. Um, one said that this is a person in your life who's been really good for you. And then the other one said that this is a person in your life um, that has been toxic and then you need to let go of. So this is probably someone who is pretty heavily influenced by water energy. And water has the ability to heal, but water also has the ability to get contaminated and become toxic, become polluted, all kinds of bad things. So I'm... I'm getting the sense that there is a, a lot of bad energy that's currently going on in this relationship and for this specific incarnation and for this specific lifetime, this relationship might not be salvageable. This might be something toxic that you're gonna actually have to let run its course without you. This might be a person who needs to work through their issues and needs to find their path without you. And then your path is going to be something a little bit different. Now, you probably have really strong feelings for this person. There's a lot of things about them you like and a lot of things about you that make you want to be with them. But for some reason, the water has become toxic. And this, this isn't as good in reality as it kind of was in your head. So I'm sorry for the bad news. Let me know um, how you take that message. All right, card number five. This one is the star card. It is a card of destiny, a card of soulmates. Um, it specifically relates to, you know, the stars aligning and things being magical and kind of falling into place and everything you had ever wanted. So even if this is someone who you had kind of only recently met and you haven't fully realized it yet, you have set out some intentions about what it is you actually want, whether subconsciously or consciously. And the universe has picked up on that and they've brought you this person. Because even if you didn't think you were ready, something about what is going on energetically made the universe think that you were ready. So I know it's kind of funny how that works out sometimes, um, but this person is a really strong connection and probably the more you get to know them, the more you'll start to feel drawn to them and you'll feel the strength of this connection uh, pulling you in closer and closer. All right, our final card, card number six. What is it? Oh, it's the seven of wands trying to get the glare off okay so the seven of wands is an aggressive and even more so defensive card so this is about your territory it's about feeling like something belongs to you it's about feeling like you have to defend something against other people potentially other people who are trying to take it I'm specifically getting the sense that you are sick of having to do that. You are sick of feeling like you have to fight for everything in life. You're sick of feeling like everything's such a struggle. Like, honestly, what's probably going on is that there's a lot of other people hitting on your partner, talking to your partner, trying to get with your partner, and you are sick of trying to deal with it. I feel like you honestly would rather have me say that this person's not your soulmate right now at this point. Like, I feel like most of the people who clicked this video and picked card number six did it, whether they were fully aware of it or not, hoping that I would tell them that this person's not their soulmate so they can have an excuse to let it go, leave them, and move on because you are so sick of it. So what I'm getting is, yes, there, there really is nothing there on a, on a spiritual level 
um, in terms of destiny and you actually being meant to settle down with this person, this to me comes across more as a bump in the road. And then a few years from now, they'll come up in your Facebook feed and they'll, they'll message you or something and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I ever even bothered with that person. Like it's, it's going to be a really weird bump in the road further on in the grand scheme of things. So anyway, let me know how that went for you. Um, if you're interested, follow me on Facebook. I post about daily transits and all kinds of things. And uh, my YouTube channel is mostly about astrology and understanding people's personalities. But we'll see. I have all kinds of different things I upload. I don't do pick a cards that often, but I do offer professional readings. Um, and I've been doing them for quite a while at this point, about seven years. I can't believe it's already been seven years, though. Like, this sounds insane. So I've been doing professional readings uh, for seven years, and I tend to have really good reviews from my clients. But let me know how this pick a card went for you, because I, I totally feel like it's risky doing a pick a card. Like, I don't know what's actually going to happen, who's going to watch it, how they're going to react. Um, but thank you for giving me a chance. Bye.